Hi, I'm Nicholas Hedlund, and uh, today I'm going to talk a bit about how lifts are handled in Impact Revit. So, uh, I have opened a lift family, and this is a simple generic face based family, um, which needs to be saved in the uh, in the custom materials uh, lifts folder to be used as lifts uh, in the system. Um, there are also a few parameters that we need in this family. Uh, you can see that uh, I've created multiple types here. Um, each type needs to have a reference to um, the custom material name in, uh, in the impact database. Uh, so that's what uh, what allows us to uh, get the correct appearance in uh, in AutoCAD as well, if we choose to um, generate drawings there. Uh, we also have a uh, custom material type, which is set to L for lift, and we have a few other parameters that aren't necessary. Um, so that's pretty much it for the, the lift itself. Uh, but then how are lifts defined in the elements? So we're going to have a look at that now. So let me open up in a beam element family. Just open up a rectangular beam. And uh, if we go to impact column and beam, um, tab in the ribbon and uh, you can see that all of the functionality is grayed out uh, except for one and that's lift settings. Opening up that will bring us a grid with uh, a number of uh, lifts that we uh, with our corresponding maximum element weight. Um, there's also something called a lift method, and that's basically a way of grouping lifts. Um, so in this case, uh, 45 and 60 refer to lifting angles, which would have different capacities. Um, but that could also be a way of switching between uh, lift types. Um, and I, I can show you that uh, as well. Uh, as for lifting points, you can have one, two, or four uh, lift points. Uh, and Impact Revit automatically selects uh, the correct number of lift points. So if you have all uh, lift points, uh, all types of lift points uh, defined, Impact will first check if there's any lift with two lift points uh, which can handle the, the element weight. If that's not the case, then it goes up to four lift points and checks. Uh, if the element is too small for the for two lifts to be placed then it goes down to checking one lift point. Um, to add a new uh, lift to this we click on the add button and before I can uh, do anything here I need to load a family. So say for example we want a different type of, um, of lift to be available for us. Uh, once I've loaded that, uh, I can select it here, so I can see all the different types um, available to me in that family. Uh, I'll go for two lift points. Uh, now I can select one of the available lift methods, but maybe I want a lift method for specific for this type of lift. And then I can specify a, um, a maximum mass for this particular lift. And then I can go on and create uh, another one. It could be like 4.5. And I'll add one more. Um, over here on the right, we have um, which, when you first draw a beam, uh, it will use this lift method. 
So you can change that to uh, to our newly created one, if we like, instead. Uh, minimum spacing is um, the minimum distance between two lift points, which, as I said, if we uh, if the beam is too small or too short, it will uh, go down to one lift point, if that's available in the grid. Uh, maximum spacing, uh, if that's set to zero, there is no maximum spacing, but uh, if we if we set that to a specific value, then no matter how long the, the beam gets, it will keep that spacing. And spacing for lift points, uh, that's the, the space between, say they will have uh, two lift points here and two lift points here. That would be the distance between two lift points on one side. Then we have a few different placing alternatives along the, uh, the length of the beam. Uh, so first is central gravity, and that will place uh, them centered around the center of gravity, of course. Uh, distance between the lifts will be um, uh, a fixed um, part of the element length. It will be uh, three-fifths of the length. Um, Using the fixed placing method, we'll place at a fixed distance uh, in millimeters, which would be entered if we want that to be one and a half meters from the edge. We would change that there. And then we have part of length, which will uh, add lifts also from uh, fixed or a distance from the edge. But, uh, but in this case, it would be the length divided by five for that distance. We can also have lifts and double lines, and if we check that, uh, we get the same uh, type of placing alternatives uh, across the edge or across the uh, the short side. Um, if you do a lot of uh, definition work or family work, uh, then you might uh, not want to redefine all of these uh, uh, lifting. Uh, points so you can export them. I will export the complete uh, grid in an XML format, which you can later pick up in a different family. Okay, so I've saved my beam family with the applied changes. I just want to test this out in a project environment. So I'll go to draw beam and select my family and draw an instance. So you can see straight away that uh, these are the lifts that I inserted, uh, and the, with the default uh, lift method as well. So if I want to change that to another method, then I can just run the insert lift command, and that will give me the choice of the different uh, methods. And you can see down here which uh, lifts will be selected. I just have to press insert to change it. Um, if you for some reason want to have a, a manual settings for lifts, uh, you can always uh, expand the settings here and check override family settings. And uh, that will enable all of the fields here and uh, all of these uh, uh, fields that or these properties that are normally found in the lift settings in the family um, are also available. So I can select that I want to have um, four lift points and I can choose any type of lift that I want to. I'll give that some smaller value. Lifts for columns are basically the same as lifts for beams. Uh, so here I have a uh, column family. And uh, going to lift settings will give me a familiar dialog. Uh, we have the same uh, setup here with method lift points, uh, family type, and maximum mass. We also have a diameter which is used for uh, the case where you have a lift hole. Um, if we go to add a uh, lift here, 
with lots of lift points and see uh, instead of one, two and four lift points uh, we have the option to place lifts on side two and four points on the top face that's one point or is this lift hole. Uh, lift and side will be placed on on the right hand side of the of the beam and uh, the lift hole will be placed perpendicular to the um, to the lift inside so that would mean front face to back face uh, I'll add a lift hole just to uh, show you that uh, in the same way you need to load a family first so in the lift uh, folder I have a circular recess for this uh, case um, I can choose the type here but that doesn't really matter because I'm going to uh, uh, specify my diameter here in millimeters uh, and that will automatically uh, change the parameter on the uh, lift family or on the recess family um, I'll use it on the same method because uh, we can have combinations of uh, different lifts so I'll just add a large mass to that to make sure it's used okay and then I also need to make sure that uh, I check in the uh, checkbox to make sure the lift hole is placed as well um, and then we have the option of placing lift hole uh, so we want them to be placed as a one-fifth of the length from the top edge so I'll just apply and save that family let's close that and go back to the um, project. Now you might, um, if you're making changes to families, you might have to uh, go back and uh, remove any uh, families that are already placed in the in the project. So we'll go back and insert column, rectangular column. Let's change the type of that. Oops, we got uh, we want a vertical column. So there we go. We have lifts inside and a 60 millimeter lift hole. Uh, actually, that should maybe be adjusted a bit so they're not. Uh, on exactly the same place. 